Hello. Welcome to the first year BTEC course of Full Nanak Institute of Technology, Kolkata. I'm Dr. Inzuchi Post, and I shall be your course instructor for this session. This paper is entitled English with the paper code of HU101. <clears throat> in this paper, I shall be guiding you in the basic forms, genres, and modes of communication, and we shall be looking at examples from a globalized world. This is module three of the paper and is called vocabulary and reading. Throughout the lectures in this module, I should be looking at the process of evolution of the English language, the process of word formation, the nature and purposes of reading and various techniques of reading. We should also be considering the different reading texts in this module. This is lecture 10 in the series. It is based on word origins. In the course of this lecture, we shall be looking at the way in which the English language originated. We shall also be looking at word origins, in particular at Latin and Greek roots, at various prefixes and suffixes which have led to the process of word formation, and various foreign influences which have shaped the character of the English language. This whole lecture shall attempt to elucidate for you the process of diversity and growth in the making of the English language. So, to begin with, where did the English language come from? Where was the origin, where was the source of the English language? Obviously, it was in England. But there are different periods in the growth and evolution of English. And actually, it has emerged from a composite uh, element. It has got a composite element with uh, diverse inputs shaping its character. Now, the language as we know it, English, has emerged from Old English or Anglo-Saxon. This is a language belonging to the Germanic family of languages spoken by the Angles, Saxons and the Jews. These were the Germanic tribes who settled in Romanized Britain in the 5th and 6th centuries. So actually we have to go back in time to the 4th or 5th centuries when we had England, which was an outpost of the Roman Empire. And it was colonized by Rome, it was a Roman colony, and the Britons who lived over there were mainly the invaders who had come from the Germania. Now, the contact with Rome brought about some influence of Latin, which was further strengthened for Christianity. Latin words came into the vernacular and enriched English. Then we had a later period of French influence, which came after the Norman Conquest, 1066. And Middle English was the next period of the language till the 13th century. So we had three periods in English. Early English belonging to the Anglo-Saxon period, then the Middle English period from the Norman Conquest to the 13th century, and then modern English emerged from the 14th century, when, and there were successive waves of influence even then, uh, beginning with the Renaissance. So you can see that there are clearly different periods into which the development of English can be divided into, beginning with the early English period or the Anglo-Saxon period. Now, I hope to shed more light on these uh, things and developments which I have talked about. So I shall be elaborating on several of these aspects, particularly the coming of the Germanic tribes the, and the Latin influence of Christianity. Let us proceed forward. Now, this map shows you the North Sea and the British Isles, Isles of Great Britain and Ireland. And you can also see the continent where the Germanic tribes live. Now, the uh, Germanic tribes mainly inhabited what was Germania in those days, that is, including the countries of uh, the Scandinavian countries and also uh, what is present day Germany and Holland. So, the original inhabitants, if you are to call them as such, of the British Isles were really the Welsh people who lived in Wales. And uh, the 
present day Britons are really the descendants of the Germanic tribes who came over from Germania in the continent. And there were successive waves of Germanic invasions in the 5th century, and uh, these people, the tribes who came, the Angles, the Saxons, and the Jews, there were three different tribes who came over from Germania, from the Scandinavian countries in Germania, to the island of Great Britain, and they settled over there in different parts of the country. And uh, they became the settlers of the country, and uh, in fact, they constituted the greater part of the British population after that. So, all this was taking place in the later days of the Roman Empire, and also afterwards. So, around this time, the Anglo-Saxons had come, they settled down in Great Britain. So this was the early period in the development of the English language. This is no, that is why the three tribes taken together, the Anglo-Saxons and the Jews, they are called together, they are called the Anglo-Saxons. And this was the earliest period, the Old English period in the history of English language and literature. The Old English people had a literature of their own. The earliest extant epic in English that we have is Beowulf, which is around the 8th or 10th century. Now, here you have a map of the genealogy of English. You can see that there is the Germanic uh, family of languages. Now, actually, English ultimately belongs to the Indo European family of languages, which indicates a set of languages in Europe and Asia. And there are the Germanic uh, family of languages. Among them, we have Old High German, Old Norse, and West East and West Germanic languages. Now, Old English or the Anglo Saxon is derived from the Germanic family, being an offshoot of the West Germanic branch. So you have English, Flemish, Dutch, Afghans, and German as all derivatives from the West Germanic languages. So, this is a brief look at the genealogy of English and how it is descended from the Germanic family of languages. So, we have, so to make a brief recap, what have we looked at? We have seen that uh, uh, England came under the influence of the Roman colonists, and the, there was some significant contact with Rome in the early period. And then there were successive waves of invasions from the Germanic tribes from the continent. And uh, these tribes, particularly the Angles, the Saxons, and the Jews, who came over from the European mainland and settled in. Great Britain became the Anglo Saxons or the settlers in the British Isles. And their language was recognized as the English language, or their language became what was known later as the English language. And it was derived from the Indo European family of languages, and it was derived from the West Germanic branch of the Germanic family of languages. Right. Let us now move on to look at the foreign influence which shaped the character of English. Now, in the English language was molded to successive waves of foreign invasions and diverse foreign influences as well. Uh, first of all, among these uh, foreign influences, there was the Scandinavian influence of the Danish invaders from Denmark. There were actually successive uh, you know, waves of very destructive uh, Danish invasions during the time of the Anglo-Saxons. And we have got numerous records in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle about the inroads made by the Danish invaders and uh, the successive Anglo-Saxon kings made uh, numerous attempts to resist uh, or thwart the, the, the depredations of these uh, invaders from Denmark. However, the Scandinavians also mingled with the population and there were various uh, influences in terms of Scandinavian terms which came into the character of the English language. Some of these were war and law terms like law, fellow, outlaw, and so on. Others were household terms like husband, uh, and there were also architectural terms that came in like window. So there were numerous terms related to daily affairs in life which uh, were influenced by Scandinavian words. 
next great influence that came into the character of English and which uh, brought about significant changes in its character was, of course, the French influence, which came with the Norman conquest of 1066. The last uh, Saxon king, Harold, was defeated at the Battle of Hastings by William of Normandy, uh, who brought about the French court and the French nobility into the um, into the Isles of Great Britain. And for two or three centuries after that, it, French was the language of the upper classes in England, and uh, Anglo-Saxon was confined to the lower classes. However, this state of affairs continued for some time, but uh, ultimately English again came to the fore, and this was an English which had been tremendously modified as a result of the French influences which had come in from France. Now, there were influences in almost every sphere of life, so we have terms related to war, related to cooking, in which the French were you know, superlatively good, then various terms related to daily life, to nobility, uh, forms of government. So in almost every sphere of life, we have you know, French terms which came into and molded the character of the English language. So the English that emerged in the 13th and 14th centuries after the French influence had uh, somewhat abated was a modified language as a result of the influence of French. So these were the two significant influences, Scandinavian and French. The other important influence that needs to be talked about is the coming of Christianity and the Latin and Greek influence in the UFC has a very important role to play in the character of the words formed and the, the Latin and Greek groups which came into it. Now, Christianity, of course, brought about the influence of Latin and Greek. The early Christian contacts came during the Roman period. Uh, yes, this was the early period when uh, there were several contacts with Christianity already. Um, it did have some effect and some words were incorporated in English with Latin. The coming of the Christian culture to England in Latin form actually came with the coming of the Roman and Irish missionaries in the 7th century, like St. Patrick and St. Adam from Ireland. So they came over and there were various uh, works in Old English which were transcribed in Latin. Now, various uh, church and liturgical terms came into the language, all from Latin. Uh, like minister, monk, bishop, priest. Uh, this is uh, obviously understandable as the most of the church services being conducted by the clergy. So they tended to use Latin. So this, these terms uh, became a part of the English language gradually. They were incorporated. There were also some permanent Christian words expressing new ideas from the native sources. For example, the festival of Easter. This is uh, a particularly interesting incorporation. The Old English people already had the festival of Easter, as they called it. And when the Christian festival of Easter or resurrection was brought by the Roman influence, uh, they just incorporated this name to that pagan festival. Okay. So that is how it became the festival of Easter. Uh, so this is an actually, actually a very interesting uh, innovation. Now, there were more uh, incorporations from Latin and Greek as a result of the new learning and science which came in the 10th century and uh, sort of revitalization. And a further period when English was influenced and enriched by the Latin influence was during the Renaissance, of course, in the 15th and 16th centuries when we had a tremendous uh, revitalization of learning and all the learning and scholarship of Italy and Rome came to England this time. So there were several waves in which English was influenced by the influence of uh, Latin and Greek, particularly due to Christianity in various ways. Now, <clears throat> there are a lot of similarities. Now we have got to look now. We have briefly sketched out the story of the evolution of the English language. 
and how the language developed, from where they developed. Now, let us look at the process of word formation and uh, the roots. Now, often many words, as we can see, uh, are similar to one another, or they are often called cognates. This is because they have a common origin or a common root word. Now, when you have the root, the root is generally formed by a combination of the root and the affix, which is uh, either the prefix coming at the beginning of the word or the suffix coming at the end of the word. For example, reject, which is uh, which comes from a Latin root, reject to throw forward and reject. Re plus reject is reject. Now these affixes are mostly from Latin and Greek, wherein we can see the influence of Christianity and of Rome. Now, shall we proceed further? We shall find out more in the next uh, couple of minutes about the most common Latin and Greek words which have shaped the character of the English language. Let us see. Now, <clears throat> some of the most important and common Latin roots. Ambi. Ambi means both. And from that we get words like ambiguous, ambidextrous, and so on. The ambidextrous means somebody who can use both things, both hands at the same time. You can do two things at the same time. Aqua, meaning water, from which we get aquarium or aquamarine. Aquamarine means blue. Odd to hear, from which we get words like audience, audition, and so on. Benny means good, from which we get words like benefactor, benevolent. Cent means 100. So from that we get words like century, percent, and so on. Circum meaning around. From that we get words like circumference, circumstance. Again, contra or counter. This is something which is very commonly used. Against. From this we get words like contradict, encounter. Again, we often use the word, say, uh, go counter to something. So that means go against something. Also contrabrand, that is something which is smuggled out. Dict, to say. It means, uh, again, from this we get words like dictation or dictator. Dictation, or take down in writing what somebody is saying. Or dictator, somebody who dictates to somebody or somebody who gives somebody prescriptive norms by which to carry on. Duct, meaning to lead. Con conduct, induce, and so on. Induce means to force to do something. Fact, to do. From that we get factory or manufacture. Or form or shape, from which we get conform, reform, and so on. Okay, next we have jet or throw, from which we get words like projection, rejection, and so on. Jud or judge, from which we get words like judicial, prejudice. Mal or bad, from which we get malevolent, malefactor. This is the opposite of beni. Beni meaning good, mal meaning bad. Malevolent, cruel, malefactor, somebody who does evil. Meta or mother, from which we get material, maternity, and so on. So all dealing with uh, mother. Similarly, for Peter, we will get terms raising with father. Mit to send, transmit, admit, or permit, mort or death, from which we get mortal, mortician. So mortal, that is something which must die, mortician, again related to death, mortuary, a place where dead bodies are kept, multi or many, multimedia, multiple, okay, diverse, yes, this is again very common. Peter, so this is the opposite of meter. This is father, paternal, paternity, and so on, all related to father. Then port or carry, like portable, transportation, and so on. 
portable, something which, which can be carried. So you can see that it's uh, coming out uh, closely from the meaning. Vid or vis, to see, from which we get video, that which can be seen or televised and so on. Vok, voice or call, to vocalize, advocate, so all related to the voice or verbalizing. Rupt or to break, like bankrupt, disruption and so on. Okay, now we are going to look at certain Greek roots. Anthropo, anthropos, which means man, from which we get anthropologist, person who studies the history of mankind, and philanthropy, somebody who loves mankind. Philanthropos, lover of mankind. Otto, or self, from which we get words like autobiography, a biography written by oneself, automobile, that is a car which drives itself, and so on. Uh, bio or bios meaning life from which we get words like biology, biography and so on. Chronos or chron, time from which we get words like chronological, that is time bound, chronic, periodic intervals of time. Dyna or power from which we get words like dynamic, dynamite and so on. Dis or bad from which we get words like dysfunctional, dyslexic. So, dyslexic person who has trouble using powers of concentration, writing, coordination, and so on. Grammar, gram, thing written, epigram, telegram, and so on. Graph or writing, graph, phonograph, and so on. Hetero, meaning different, from which we get heteronym, heterogeneous, and so on. Again, diverse or different. Homo, meaning the same from which we get homonym, homogeneous, and so on. Hydra, meaning water, from which we get hydration, dehydrate, dehydrate, to drain out of water. And hydrate, that means keep uh, well watered. Hydration, keep well watered. Some more Greek roots. Hypo, meaning below or beneath, from which we get hypothermia. So if one gets frozen by ice, then uh, one suffers from hypothermia. Hypothetical, okay. so the tentative. Logy or study of, like biology, psychology, all the disciplines that we study. Micro or small, thermometer, perimeter, mis, miso, hate, misanthrope, misogyny, Mono or one, from which we get monologue, monotonous. Morph, that is form or shape, from which we get morphology, uh, morphing. Phil or love, philanthropist. Yes, this is what we were talking about. Phil and Robots, the lover of mankind, and philosophy. Uh, phobia or fear, claustrophobia. Somebody is afraid of enclosed spaces. Phobic. Again, this is fear or afraid of something. Phone or sound. So we should get phone, telephone, symphony, and so on. Okay, the photo or light from which we get photograph, phosphorus, and so on. Pseudo or false from which we get pseudonym, pseudoscience, and so on. Now, let us now, once we have looked at the roots, let us look at certain common suffixes and prefixes. Now, some of the common suffixes, agog or ego, which means leader, from which we get the words like demagogue, a leader who plays upon the feelings of the people, or pedagogue, so it's a scholarly person. Side, from which, which means killing, from which we get patricide, infanticide, herbicide, suicide, all different forms of killing. Actomy or cutting, appendectomy, splenectomy, so cutting of the appendix or the spleen, operations of various kinds. Fear or E, act or state, amnesia, state of forgetfulness, mania, state of uh, obsession with something, democracy, anarchy, all are different states. 
ik or tick, ikel, easy, having to do with anthropomorphic, uh, dramatic, biblical, cardiac. The cardiac deals with the uh, cardiac muscles or with the heart. ICS, things having to do with like optics, physics. ISK or ISCUS, ISCUS, which is small. Asterisk, like it means a little star. Is the belief in, like pacifism, so something believes in peace, terrorism, believes in terror, socialism, believes in the policy of socialist, being a socialist, communism, believes in being a communist, and so on. Is one who believes in. Uh, Pacif pacifist, terrorist, socialist, communist. Ite, one connected with, like meteorite, connected with meteor. Polite, cosmopolite, and so on. Ology, the study or field of, like biology, geology, etymology, the science of the origin of words, cardiology, and so on. Oid, or resembling, or like shape, like asteroid, spheroid, and so on. Or on air, one who takes part in, like doctor, actor, teacher, driver, and so on. Phobia, exaggerated fear, like photophobia, claustrophobia, agarophobia, and so on. Cis, or act, or state, or condition, like analysis. We shall be studying, by the way, some of these phobias in our second lecture in this series. Now some common prefixes, a or an, which means not or without, like amoral, anesthetic, apolitical, asocial, ab or away from, like abduction, abstain, abnormal. Add or to or toward, like adjoin, adjacent, lying near to, ambi or both, meaning ambidextrous, ambivalent, again anna, up, back or against, from which we get words like analogy, anatomy, anagram, and so on. Uh, so, anti, again, against, some of these are extremely commonly used, by the way. Anti or against, which means antipathy or hatred of something, anti-war, anti-social, and so on. Apo, uh, from or away from, from which we get uh, apology, apologize, Auto or self, from which we get autobiography, automobile, autocracy, automation. So. Benny or good, from which we get benediction, benevolent, benefactor. Cata or cat means down or against, from which we get it like catastrophe, a turning down. Central or century, from which we get words like around or center. Concentric, centrifugal are words which are found for that. Circum or around, from which we get circumlocution circumference, circumvent, and so on. Com or with or together, from which we get words like communal, community, so communal harmony, dealing with the community as such, or with the commune or certain uh, society. Con or with or together, from which we get words like connect, confide, conspire. And contra or against, from which we get words like contradict, contravene, and so on. Some more prefixes, D or down or away, from which we get words like descend, deject, dire or D, true or across is the meaning, which means from which we get words like diameter, division, and so on. Dis or apart, from which we get words like disengage, discord, discomfort. This meaning ill or difficult or bad, from which we get words like dysfunctional, that which is not functional, or the central. E or out from, elect, the choose out of, eject, throw out of. So, ecto or on the outside, from which we get ectoderm or outer skin, or ectoplasm, for example. N or M, in, the meaning is in, so from which we get words like empathy or feeling in. Endo or with, within or inside. From which we get words like endoscope, instrument for observing inside. Epi or upon, 
from which we get words like epitaph, epidermis, epicenter, and so on. Iso, inward or within, from which we get like esoterio or more inward, esophagus, and so on. Iu, or well or good, from which we get euthanasia, good debt. There is a big debate about this topic whether it really it is a good death or not. Anyway, you meaning good. Uh, ex meaning out of or from, from which we get exhume, exhale, exodus, or so on. What is exodus? A mass scale leaving of people from one place to another, like the Israelites coming out from Egypt. Exhume, when you take out a dead body, for example, that is exhume, exhale, to breathe out. Hetero, other or different, heterosexual, heterodoxy, heterodox, heterogeneous, and so on. Uh, homo, meaning the same, which we get homosexual, homogeneous, homogenized, and so on. Hyper, meaning over, from which we get hypertension, hypersensitive, hyperactivity, and so on. Hypo, or under, from which we get hypotension, hypodermic, and so on. So these are certain common prefixes that uh, are used to make words in English, or the purpose of word language. Now, look at the roots in the following words. Ambulance, amble, ambulatory. So they are from the root word ambi. So from ambi, we get ambulance, amble, ambulatory. Agrarian, agriculture, agribusiness. Yes, you're right. The word agar is the root, that is root from which we get actually. Acrobat, acronym, acrophobia. Again, it is acro, which is the root. Analysis, anatomy, anachronism. So it is ana, which is the root over here. Aquarium, aquatic, aqueduct. Yes, aqua meaning water, is the root over here. So aquarium, a place of water where fish or other creatures might be kept. Aquatic, related to water. Aqueduct, again, it's like a reservoir, a pool of water. Uh, or can, kind of canal. Astronaut, astronomer, asterisk. So all these related to astro, meaning from the stellar, the sky. Cumulative, accumulate. From cumul, successive, it's added up. So these are some of the ways in which we can trace out the roots. There are various words which are all from the same root, and it is easy to spot the identification once you know the root word. Also, there is a fact that uh, if you know the root word, you can make similar words or come across similar words from that uh, original word. And also, there is a further benefit that uh, the more words you come across which are made from the same root, you can guess at the meaning of these words, even if you do not know the specific meaning of that particular word, right? So it is an extremely useful way. The knowing of the root is an extremely useful way to bring more and more words within the ambit of your talk of vocabulary and also to find out the meanings of more and more words. You see, it is not always possible to learn the meanings of new words all the time, but it is definitely possible to uh, learn some basic roots and some basic prefixes and suffixes, which lead to the formation of a large number of words made from the same root word. So once you know a root word, you actually know a number of words which are all made with the same root. So that is a great advantage in your favor. So one of the ways of learning new words is to know about the roots. That is why we have stressed the importance of the Latin and Greek roots in this lecture so much. <clears throat> Again, this is the other kind of exercise you can have where more words are made with the root words given to you from this, for example, disruption, dysfunction, disturb, peri, okay, perimeter, periwinkle, tele, television, telephone, miss, 
misanthropy and so on. Mistrust, un, un, unfamiliar, unfor unforgetfulness, ex, uh, ex wife, ex husband, ex sale, ex moon, anti, anti aircraft, anti communist. So you can make also numerous words. So this kind of exercise also helps in associating more and more words that you are actually familiar with, but all the time you may not remember. So if you do this kind of exercise, it will build up your process of knowing more and more words or bringing the words within your TV record. Now, English, therefore, as we can see, has come under diverse forms of English. It started off as the language of the Germanic tribes who came over from the European mainland to England in the 4th and 5th centuries or the Anglo-Saxon period. It developed a language and literature of its own. It came under successive waves of foreign influences. The Scandinavian invaders contributed to it. So did the French when they came after the Norman conquest and virtually colonized the whole of England for nearly two or three centuries, when French was the language of England. So the French influence also modified the course of the language. Then there were successive waves, as you have seen, of contacts with Latin and Greek, especially through Christianity, the church and the, the clergy, and also the influences that came during the Renaissance and the Reformation in the 15th and 16th century. Successively, English has also been modified due to other changes that have come about by the Industrial Revolution in the 18th century. And uh, other changes have come, come about in the 20th century. Now, though English has been shaped by all these diverse foreign influences, it has definitely emerged with a character of its own. The eclecticism of the language is particularly manifest. It has continued to borrow and incorporate from newer and newer sources. In fact, the coming of computers and the internet has really enriched the English language with a number of terms which uh, were not there before. So uh, they have all come into the character of the English language. Like, Next speak, for example, which is the language of the internet. Again, uh, the spread of uh, mobile and multimedia texting and messages and uh, the social media nowadays, like Facebook, they have also led to the proliferation of various other terms, like Googling, for example, which were not there before. So the language has really uh, kept on borrowing more and more terms, and uh, you know, it has not only participated in changes, but it has made these changes a part and parcel of its own development. So it continues to borrow, it continues to incorporate, but it continues to try at the same time. So we can rightly say that uh, it has been molded by all these influences, but it has also emerged as remarkably tough and resilient. And uh, it has not uh, given way before the changes that are coming. Uh, like uh, some languages, like Latin, for example, have become dead languages. They are no longer used as living speech. But English continues to be the language not only of the people of Great Britain, but of other people all around the world. And it is one of the most widely spoken and understood languages all over the world. So the tremendous uh, popularity of English uh, is uh, due to partly its character, the way that it has uh, incorporated from other languages, it has borrowed from other foreign cultures, but it has still survived and continued to thrive on its own. So the language does continue to survive, to live and to thrive against all odds 
and this is a testament to the vitality and the resilience of the English language. In the course of our following lectures, we shall take a look more at the process of word formation, more about vocabulary, where we shall look at the antonyms, synonyms, and different kinds of one word substitutions which are used before we look at reading and its uh, purposes and different reading techniques. So beginning with the character of the English language and the process of word formation, we shall be going on to reading and the vocabulary and other technical aspects that are involved in reading. So this brings us to the end of this particular lecture on the evolution of the English language and the process of word formation.